stand up. Got the class coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great joy to officially introduce to you all the Market Street Mission Life Change Class of July 2024. These men have put in uh, extremely hard work over the past uh, eight months to a year. Uh, and I always ask the guys to turn and face the crowd to see the supporting faces uh, that have been encouraging them and praying for them and there with them through this whole journey. It's just always a good reminder that this journey cannot be walked alone. We desperately need the support of others that love us. So thank you, men. Thank you, audience. You guys can all be seated now. Uh, let's open our uh, time together um, with a word of prayer. I'm going to introduce and call up Steve Leonard. Steve has been uh, faithfully serving our board for many years and has been a big encouragement to myself and to many other people as well. Great. Let's pray together. We shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, and we worship the Lord with gladness. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful place, for this beautiful day in which to celebrate the grace and love that you have poured out into the men who are graduating. We thank you for them. We thank you for their hard work. And we thank you that we can enter your gates with thanksgiving. And we give you thanks for all your blessings upon these men through the mission. And we give you thanks, Lord, and sing joyfully to you and pray that all that we say and do and pray in the message brought would give glory to you, O Father, and to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may your Holy Spirit move with power in this time. We give you thanks and praise your name, for you are good and your love endures forever. You are faithful to the end of our lives and to the end of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Steve. Uh, my name is Jacob Gaeta. Uh, I have the great honor of being the Market Street Mission Program Director, and I'll be your host for this evening as well. I'm going to call up our class president, Cameron, to the uh, microphone. So every morning at Market Street, we begin the day with a chapel service. Um, and the men that are in our program lead the service uh, with singing, uh, with a devotion, uh, and with our pledge as well. Uh, our devotions are brought out of the Life Recovery Bible, and throughout the past 12 weeks, the men who are graduating today have been leading the chapel going through those devotions. The final uh, devotion in that Bible is falls on today, and I'm going to ask Cameron to begin with the devotion, and then right after the devotion, um, he's going to lead us all in the pledge. There you go, Cameron. All right, I'm reading out of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had, and be ready to suffer too. For if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. You won't spend the rest of your life chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. You have had enough in the past of the evil things 
that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. So this coincides with step number 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. We probably came into recovery because we had enough. We had enough of the pain, the lies, and the, and the destruction that resulted from our addictive behavior. One day at a time, we learned the principles on the road to recovery. Now we're at a place we weren't sure we could ever reach. Step 12. Now we are encouraged to share the message with others, even though not everyone will welcome it. Peter pointed out, you have had enough in the past of evil things that godless people enjoy. Their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties. Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do. So they slander you. Jesus said, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Our message won't be accepted by the, way, by the masses. The people on the highway to hell won't eagerly restrict themselves to the clearly defined steps on the road to recovery. But for those who do listen, our stories could be the difference between life and death for them. All right, everybody stand up, please. I, as a child of God in Christ, solemnly pledge to lead a drug-free life, righteously and godly in this present world. I will say no to harmful drugs and alcohol, and I will not use them. I will help my friends and others say no to harmful drugs and alcohol, and I will stand up for what I know is good and right. So help me God, I am somebody in Christ. So why don't we all stay standing, um, if you don't mind, and we're going to spend, uh, I love this uh, opportunity as we're celebrating what Christ has done in the lives of the men who are graduating today, that we get to worship him directly uh, under his canopy, the sky that he created outside in his, in, uh, his creation. And um, certain songs through the years become... Uh, become become a kind of mission songs and so this is one that's over the last year kind of become a mission song kind of a theme song and as we worship together it's called trust in god romans eight thirty one says what then shall we say to these things if god is for us who can be against us he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how will he not with him also freely give us all things if god gave us jesus christ what won't he give us um, on the way between here and heaven? Oh. Uh -huh. 
heard, and he answered I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered That's why I trust him, that's why I trust him I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered I sought the Lord and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord. And he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. Now, I say. Revelation 5 says that I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Let's sing this all to the Lord.
must be saved in the name of Jesus. Just realized how weak I was. Uh, well, it gives me great joy uh, to introduce our uh, CEO, Executive Director, David Scott. The Market Street Mission has been in existence since 1889. Um, and in 1989, uh, Dave Scott took the reins as our director, and he's been with us since. Scott has gifted him uh, with a vision, and he uh, equipped people around him uh, to make the mission what it is today. We are very grateful that he's still with us. 
Jacob. It's my role here to welcome you all on behalf of Market Street Mission here in Morristown, and then also Ashbury Park and Newton as we're uh, actually trying to make everybody understand that it's all Market Street Mission. We want to welcome you here. Now, um, probably pretty much everybody here knows um, I'm struggling with life right now. Uh, a week ago yesterday, my life partner of 51 years went to be with the Lord. And so as I face this crowd tonight, I'm realizing what Market Street is really about, guys. It's really about coming to know the Lord and then growing in Him. And I'm proud to see the 16 guys that have been here and we're going to hear your testimony. So maybe we should just have you all stand up again because you're what it's about tonight. You want to stand up? Just turn around and face the audience again. Thanks, guys. Okay, and then as we think about what we're doing, I think it's good as we realize that um, God continues to work in my heart. I want to see us be everything we can as a guy comes through, helping them be what God wants them to be. So who's here that's an alumnus of the mission? Would you guys stand up? Anybody that's an alumnus? <laughs> Always exciting to see you guys there. Okay, and then we probably ought to have everybody that's uh, involved in terms of helping the mission be what it is, the board and the staff, if you'd all stand up as well. Thank you. So I should thank uh, different ones. Thank Steve, uh, the board vice chair, for his opening prayer. And Matt Buckley is going to give the message uh, later on. And then uh, the Community Church of Kenelon is providing uh, refreshment for us. Now, actually, we have to have you all know that actually we're going to have refreshment in the dining room at Marcus Street. So you're going to have to go where it says Jesus saves and then go downstairs. Okay? So that's afterwards. But for any of you that if this is new to them, I'd like for you to understand how the program works. Um, we have two broad programs. One is called Basic Need, and the other one is really the Life Change Program that these guys are graduating from. In the Basic Need Program, we provide emergency shelter for men, and then we provide food, we provide vouchers. And the object of the Life Change or the uh, Basic Needs Program is to form relationships, to have everybody understand that we care about them. That's the whole purpose. We spend a lot of time and money, but that's not what we're really about. What we're really about is the Life Change Program, which these guys are graduating from. And you begin that with a uh, month stay, which is really assessment. But we're looking at them, and they're looking at us, trying to say, do I really want to be here? And my background is counseling, but I would say to you, I don't think we have a clue how to motivate anybody. So rather than try and say that's what we're doing, we're looking at is there a spark? And if there is, then hopefully that involves them signing a contract and us signing a contract. And after that month, they begin the actual formal program. For the first month, uh, three months, they spend in uh, phase one, which is mostly work therapy, but it includes counseling, includes groups. Um, it's a real time where we're working with them. They're working on beginning their life here. The most important piece is the one that guys just finished, the second phase, which is classroom instruction, where we cognitively you know, put in their hands Here's what was going on, trying to help them understand. They spent about half the day, six days a week in class. But they begin where the life has crashed, and it's exciting to see this event where we can celebrate with them what the Lord has done. So um, that's what you're doing here tonight. We're celebrating with these guys the Lord's work in their life. I need to, uh, again, thank all of you. I'm involved in rescue. I love it because I've been involved 45, 50 years. But part of the reason I love it is because it's here. So you can carry on the normal life and still come in and help with the soup, help with different things. And I appreciate all of you that are helping as volunteers. Um, the mission sees about $8 million come in from Morristown and about $2 million for Asbury Park. And so you are a crucial part of that. The Lord could drop money from heaven, but the way he usually does it, he uses you to provide the money to keep the ministry going. So as we uh, celebrate with this, guys, we just... Uh, Thank you for being here, joining us this evening. Bless you. Bye. Good evening. My name is George Musab, and I'm COO from Market Street Mission. 
Uh, it is a joy and again a privilege to be here. It's a joy to get to serve the Lord in this ministry. It's a joy to get to see these guys seated in front of me um, that are graduating tonight. Um, it's always a privilege to watch really the transformation uh, in these men's lives. And uh, again, all glory and honor goes to Jesus Christ as we, uh, for the work that is done. So Dave really explained the program. I'm just going to say a couple more things about the mission very quickly. We have um, three main sites. Now we have our main site is in Morristown. You can see the sign back there, Jesus Saves. We have our uh, second site that have, have been started back in uh, 2007 in Asbury Park, uh, which has been called Jersey Shore Rescue Mission, but now is going to be called Market Street Mission Jersey Shore. And then we have another site in Newton called Market Street Mission Sussex. And uh, the Lord has given us that opportunity to have those. Plus, uh, he has blessed us with uh, five sober houses uh, that men are, are living in. We just, we're just opening another one, uh, getting it done, and it should be ready to open this year. So it's really amazing the way the Lord has blessed the ministry. As Dave said, somebody comes in, initially they're very dependent on the program, but as they go through, there's more and more freedom, freedom and they'll finally, these men are going to be entering transition, uh, three months of staying at the mission, still accountability for those that aren't going home or, or doing something else, but then uh, uh, for those that are staying, staying for three more months, saving money, looking for housing, and then some of them will get to stay in some of our sober houses, some will move into other houses. So. It's really amazing to see um, this is a, a mission that is based on Jesus Christ, and I love that. We have, in our basic needs, we also have two major thrift stores. We've got our thrift store in Morristown and our thrift store in, uh, in uh, Asbury Park. And between those two stores, the Lord has blessed us to bring in about $2.5 million a year. And the men, one of the most important things is that's our work therapy for our men in the program. So they go and they work as part of it while they're here in the program. But it's also a great place. It's a blessing to the community. They're blessings to the community. They are um, blessings to the people for vouchers, which just for inexpensive goods. And uh, a lot of my house is furnished from them. So keep donating. If you have really good uh, living room furniture that's grayish, let me know. I need, I need a new set. So um, that's it. What I will say, and Dave already mentioned it. We'll have the cake back there. If anybody ever wants a tour, please come take a tour of the mission. Uh, you really can't picture what happens there until you see it. So please, at some point, come and uh, take a tour and see what we do. The Lord bless you. We are now uh, kind of the, the highlight, the uh, key point of this whole graduation is we're going to listen to testimonies that the men have prepared. So they're going to stand up while their testimony, while well, you're going to hear their testimony, have been recorded through the sound system. So uh, each of you guys, in alphabetical order, will stand up as you hear your names. And we're going to start. So take a quick listen. The testimonies are amazing. They're powerful. These testimonies are recorded. They're short. I encourage you, if you get a chance to talk to some of the men, have them share a little bit of their story. You'll hear a lot more. Praise the Lord. Hi, my name is Innocent Amira. I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm the last born of one sister and three stepsisters. My mom is still living, but unfortunately my dad died in 2012. I finished high school in Nairobi, Kenya and joined the university, but I dropped out. I started drinking when I was around 12 years old. The mission is my second long-term rehab. I've also been in a 28-day short-term rehab. My peer recovery specialist in Clara Mass Medical Center suggested Market Street Mission since I requested a Christian rehab. I have fully opened my heart to God and let His Spirit lead me. My life has changed in many ways. Most importantly, 
knowing why I was created to glorify and worship God. I have learned to seek God, stay on his path, and allow his will in my life. My desire and perspective of, my, of life has, have changed, and my physical and mental state has improved. I want to thank all the Market Street Mission staff who helped me in some way during this journey. I thank my mom, sister, and uncle for never giving up on me. Lastly, my favorite verse is Mark 8, 36 to 37. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his own soul? Thank you. Hello, I'm Craig. I was born in Long Branch, New Jersey, and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I grew up with my dad and sister three years younger than me. My parents were divorced, but I would spend the summer with my mom in Frill, New Jersey. My dad was in the military stationed in West Germany, Frankfurt, where I attended the kindergarten. I, moved, I then moved to New York and attended first grade through my sophomore year at George Washington Warehouse. I attended Madawan High School and Frill Borough High School in my junior and senior years. I dropped out of my senior year at Frio Borough and obtained my GED while in prison in 2008. I was 17 years old when I, when I started drinking daily and experimenting with marijuana. I've attended four outpatient programs. Morristown Market Street Mission is my first long-term program. I entered the Jersey Shore Rescue Mission because I was willing to accept change. After two months on the program, I, went, I was then sent to Morristown Market Street Mission. My experience at Market Street has invigorated my soul, spiritually, physically, and mentally. I'm a member of Calvary Church and attend a celebration recovery every Thursday night. I was baptized at Calvary Baptist on March 17, 2024. I finished the Bible study classes and became a member and greeter for fellowship. My life has changed spiritually and transformed me from a liability to an asset for my community and family. I would like to thank Ms. Diane, Ms. Kelly, Brian Fermel, Will Ward, Coach Ruggiero, and Michael Duran. My favorite verse is Proverbs 27 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Good evening, I'm Cameron Brown. I was born and raised in Marstown, New Jersey. My mom and grandma raised me. My dad was in and out of my life. I left high school my senior year and obtained my GED that summer. I was 14 years old when I started smoking weed daily. I've been to two residential programs. Market Street Mission is my first long-term rehab. I was at a short-term program looking for a long-term Christian program and found the Market Street Mission. I knew coming here that Christ had already forgiven me, but being here, I've learned to forgive myself through the grace of God. I have always believed in Christ and the sacrifice he made on the cross, but now I believe and live by the example he has set before us trying to love others as Christ loves us. It has deepened my relationship with Christ, straightened my path, and given me the tools and resources to follow God's will and be an example for my peers. I thank Ms. Kelly, Keyshawn, Greg Washington, Ms. Debbie, Antonio, Ms. Anna, Ms. Natalie, J.R., A. Aaron, and Coach. My favorite verse is 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 12. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hello, I am Ronnie Brown. I was born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. My mother and father raised me. I have four sisters and two brothers. I attended public school number eight and John F. Kennedy High School. I graduated. I started using drugs at 15 years old and drinking at 12 years old. Market Street Mission is my first rehabilitation program. I was powerless over my addiction, 
my life became unmanageable. I thank God for New Bridge Medical Center, which led me to the Market Street Mission. My experience at the mission led me to a relationship with God. I always accepted Christ into my life. The Life Change Program has made me a better man and has taken me to places where I can restore. <clears throat> that is my heart, where God dwells in me. I want to thank the mission staff, Brian Formell, Coach Reganero, Greg Washington, Miss Renee Rivera, my counselor, and Devin Brown, my sponsor. Philippians 4, 13 is my favorite verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Good evening, I am Manuel Carmona. I was born in the Bronx, New York and raised in Plainfield, New Jersey by both parents which are now deceased. I have one brother, two daughters, a son, and a grandson, another grandchild on the way. I went to Plainfield High School and dropped out at uh, the 10th grade. At the age of 12, I began my first use of drugs, which was marijuana, which quickly led to the heroin and other drugs. In my struggle, I battled my way through four rehabs. After my recent rehab, I believe God, my higher power, led me to the Market Street Mission. I realize God has always been in my life through faith and my prayers for forgiveness. Today, I love God first, then myself. I have accepted God, believing I need to turn my life over to Him. Accepting Christ has changed many issues I've dealt with that had led me to a loss in a trap of darkness in my past. I now walk with God in light with my brothers at the Market Street Mission. The brotherhood at the mission has also given me the strength and courage to continue this lifelong journey. Thank you all brothers, Ms. Diane, Pastor Pete, Dr. Dan, Pat Tanzi, and last but not least, the most excellent counselor of all times, Ms. Kelly. You've been always and will be a blessing. I thank God for you all. My favorite verse from the Word of God is Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He led me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, Thy rod and staff shall comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all days of my life and will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hello, I'm David Cook. I was born and raised in New Jersey. My parents raised me, my brother, and two sisters. I dropped out of school in 11th grade. I started using drugs and alcohol heavy, heavily when I was 15 years old. Market Street Mission is my first rehab program. When I lost everything because of alcohol, I went for help. That brought me to the mission. The mission made me understand that I was lost and I and is helping me find myself. I understand that Jesus gave his life for my sins. My life changed when I got help with my anger and uh, distrust in people. I want, I want to thank the Coach Miguel, Miss Kelly, Antonio, and TJ for everything they have done for me. My favorite verse is uh, Psalms 23.4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hello, my name is Daniel DeStefano. I was born in West Patterson, New Jersey. A loving and caring mother, father, brother, 
raised me. I graduated high school and two years of vocational college. I started using drugs regularly in my late teens after a wrist injury. Market Street Mission is my first program. I'm not sure how I came to Market Street Mission. I think it was God's plan. I realized that I needed to forgive myself. I'm clean and sober for the first time in 20 years. My mind is clear, open, of feelings and faith. My favorite verse selected is Luke 631. Do to others as you would have them do to yourself. Hello, I'm Jack from Elk. I was born in Patterson, New Jersey and raised in Ringwood, New Jersey by my mom and dad with my brother. I left high school at 16 and earned my GED. I was 14 when I started drinking and smoking pop. Market Street Mission is my first recovery program. I ended up at the mission on the advice of my brother and girlfriend. Being at the mission has allowed me to reflect on my life and mistakes. I have accepted Christ as my savior and I am thankful. Market Street Mission has changed my life in many ways. I have found inner peace, a reconnection with God, and a better understanding of the world around me. I thank every person who works at the Market Street Mission. Each one of them has been a tremendous blessing in my life. The work they do is selfless and a true calling from God. One of my favorite verses is Psalm 23, one through three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on the right path for his name's sake. Hello, I'm Urban Graham. I was born and raised in Patterson, New Jersey. I have a father, mother, sister, and a brother. My sister is the only one living. I went to first and 11th grade in Patterson, New Jersey. But I dropped out before I got to the 12th grade. I was eight years old when I had my first drink. I was 16 years old when I started drinking regularly. And at the same time, I first tried drugs. I had been to two long residential rehab. My childhood best friend, Dorian Mann, told me about Market Street Mission. All parts of the mission that helped me understand I need to be forgiven. I learned much from the staff, counselors, and the chapel service. I was baptized in 2003, and I have decided to follow Christ again since coming to Market Street Mission. I no longer drink and plan to be sober for the rest of my life. I have learned a lot here, including the tools I need to be sober and a lot about the Bible. I have also gained many friends and brothers in sobriety, which will help me. I want to thank God, my friend Dorian, all counselors, and all the staff. My favorite verse, Luke 631, and as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. My name is Michael Hook. I was born in St. Joe's Hospital, Patterson, and raised in Patterson. I have two sons and two brothers, my mother and father deceased. I went to school nine in Patterson. My freshman year, I dropped out of Wayne Hills High School. I was prescribed Xanax at 13 years old. I was on Xanax for the next four years. At 22 years old, I started using cocaine. I have been in five outpatient rehabs and eight mental health facilities. I tried to get into Eva's Kitchen in Patterson at least six times. I gave up until this great lady Amy told me about the mission. She helped me get to the mission. I was so broken, God came to me one night and, cried, and I cried so much. I felt God talked to me and said everything would be okay. I have accepted everything that God has done for us. He gave his only son for our sins. I went through a few heart surgeries, I always believe in God. The mission helped me understand who he is. I want to thank Brian, Dr. Dan, and Jacob. My favorite verse is 2 Timothy 1.7, for the spirit God has given us does not make us timid, 
but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Good evening, my name is Scott. I was born and raised in Sparta, New Jersey. I grew up with amazing people around me, my mother, father, brother, and great immediate family uh, and close friends. My early education in the Sparta school system sent me into a world with a 3.0 GPA and a high school diploma and a thirst to discover the world. Unfortunately, in my mid-30s, I fell into alcoholism, first slowly, then uncontrollably. The Market Street Mission is my first drug and alcohol program. Towards the end of my alcohol abuse, my life had proved proven unmanageable, and I ended up in the Newton Mission, which led me to the Market Street Mission. I have been walking with Christ my entire life, though I didn't have a relationship with my Lord and Savior until 25. The Life Change program showed me that what it's like to live and uh, work with fellow believers and has been a necessary part of my life journey. The experience at the mission will live with me for the rest of eternity. I would like to thank the Market Street Mission and all the staff, though I would like to especially thank the five ladies who made my life at the mission extra special, Melanie, Ruth, Lynn, Julie, and Michelle. Thank you for all your love and encouragement. I want to share the Bible verse I hold closest to my heart, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in us to will and to act according to his good purpose. Hey, my name is Aaron Matias. I was born in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and moved around quite often. Uh, my parents divorced when I was young. I have two brothers and one sister. Uh, I dropped out of high school and got my GED. I went on to study engineering at Essex County College. I was 16 years old when I started drinking and using marijuana. By 18 years old, I had experimented with opiates. Uh, by the age of 24 years old, I had a full-blown heroin addiction. Uh, I used heroin on and off for about 10 years. I have only been to one other long-term rehab before I came to the Market Street Mission. In 2020, I had my own business consulting for a vertical farming company. Uh, then I realized that I had slowly lost my job, apartment, and car, so I was sleeping on the street in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, in July 2023, I was homeless, hungry, and sleeping anywhere I could lay my head. I did that for two months until a family member told me about Market Street Mission. Uh, my experience at the mission has allowed me to look back on my life and see all the mistakes I made trying to fill a gap meant for God. I was raised in the church and moved away from Christianity when I was 17 years old. I had a good knowledge base even if I did not know God. My time at the mission has allowed me to get to know Christ. Measuring how much my life has changed due to being in the Market Street Mission is hard. I know I have found the peace that I searched for years using drugs and alcohol. Good evening. I am Nicholas McKenna. I was born in Pequannock, New Jersey and raised in Ringwood, Butler and Bloomingdale, New Jersey. I had an okay upbringing. My mother, a single parent, tried her hardest to raise me and my three younger siblings. I started my schooling at a Catholic school. After that, I attended public school and graduated from high school. I started using drugs and alcohol regularly around the age of 14. I was in an outpatient rehab. I was in one nine-month program three times and two six-month programs. I called Market Street Mission and asked for a bed. I was asked to call the Newton Mission. Up there, I talked to John Clark, who helped me set things up. I spoke with Brian and Jacob and completed a phone intake. The Newton Mission site director, Jeff Lewowski, brought me to the Market Street Mission. My experience at the mission has been a good one. It made me realize that I needed more help in my life than just quitting drugs and alcohol. I do realize and accept what Jesus did for me. I am slowly recommitting my life to Jesus. My life changed in a way I never thought it would. I perceive life by wanting to be a productive member of society, so I am changing how I think and feel about myself. I want to thank all the staff members, the counselors, the interns, thrift store staff, and volunteers.
Hi, I'm Terrence Miller. I was born in Newark, New Jersey and raised in Newark and East Orange. I am the only child of my mother who was deceased. I did not know my father who was also deceased. I have three children, my sons, Zakai and Dorian, and my daughter, Cassia. I attended alternative school all through junior high and high school. I dropped out in the 11th grade. I was 19 years old when I started drinking alcohol. I attended one long-term rehab before Market Street Mission. After I relapsed, I was recommended by a social worker to the Market Street Mission. My experience at that mission helped me realize how spiritually lost I was. I have accepted what Christ has done for me on the cross. He has sacrificed his life for me for all my sins. The Life Change Program changed me to be humble and open-minded. want to know who Jesus Christ is and give myself to God. I want to thank my counselor, John, and everyone at the warehouse. Isaiah 5410 is my favorite verse. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Good evening, my name is Christopher Murphy. I was born in Elizabeth and raised in North New Jersey. I am the third oldest of six children born to Ulysses and Juanita Murphy. I have three sisters and two brothers, one who is deceased. I did not finish high school but received my GED in Ware State Prison in Waycross, Georgia. I began using drugs at the age of 13. I have attended three different treatment facilities. I graduated from the Market Street Mission Life Program in 2013. Since leaving, my life has been going in the opposite direction of what I learned while in the program. I decided to return. I needed desperately to be forgiven and restored. I accepted what Christ has accomplished upon the cross, for he has forgiven me for my sins, so I must also forgive those who sin against me. I have recommitted my life to Christ. I am no longer using drugs and alcohol as a means of dealing with my feelings, and I am learning to accept who I am just the way I am. I would like to thank Mrs. Diane, Mr. John for being a spiritual counselor, Mrs. Renee for her wise counsel, Coach for always pulling me up, and Greg Washington for being a father figure. My favorite scripture is 2 Chronicles 714. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will hear their land. Hello, I'm Carlos Rodriguez. I was born in El Salvador and raised in both El Salvador and Los Angeles, California. I am the second to last child in a family of six, four boys and two girls. My grandmother raised me in El Salvador, and later at age seven, my mother and older brother raised me in Los Angeles, California. My highest level of education is high school. I started drinking at the age of 17. I started using cocaine in my 20s. The Market Street Mission is the first long-term residential rehab I have attended. My spouse referred me to the mission. My experience at the mission has helped me renew my faith in God and Jesus Christ and showed me the need to forgive myself and repent. I have recommitted my life to Jesus for he died on the cross so our sins can be forgiven and through him we can be reconciled with God. My life has positively changed since I entered the Missions Life program. I am humble because I am at peace and feel healthier, allowing me to make positive choices. I thank my counselor, John, for always giving me positive feedback and guidance. I also would like to thank the staff members, Ali, Coach, Miguel, and Brian, for taking the time and making the effort to make me feel like a part of the program. My favorite, my favorite verse to share is Psalms 91.1, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadows of the Almighty.
And uh, ultimately, as we know that these testimonies, they point to the absolute grace of God. It's the grace of God that has showered on these men into which they could have a new life. Um, the Market Street Mission uh, is uh, governed by a board, and uh, I believe that for the mission to continue to do what it's doing, to be a mission that is honoring to Christ, uh, it, may be it must be governed by a board of men and women uh, who absolutely love Jesus uh, and love the mission that we're on. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to call up uh, Matthew Buckley. He is uh, board secretary. Uh, he's been a, a dear brother to many of the men here. Uh, he has been a uh, mentor and a discipler to some of the guys in our program and a great encouragement to myself as well. I want to introduce you to Matt, and he's going to provide an address. Thank you, Jacob. It's a real pleasure to be here, and I want to thank each of you men. 16 messages we've already heard tonight of the goodness of God. Personal testimonies, thank you. I think we could all leave right now and be full, full with the goodness of God and giving glory to Him. But I have been asked uh, to pull together some thoughts, a, ch a charge, so to speak, something that would be encouraging and something that would be helpful for each of you as you experience life and uh, as God has it intended for you and the next steps. I really thank you for uh, committing to the, to the progress and, and to the process here at the Market Street Mission. I have to believe there were days that you wanted to leave. There were days that it seemed very difficult, but you hung in there. So, praise be to God, you're here. It's quite an accomplishment. It's already been said today that families and friends play a key role in your growth and in your development. And I, I'm really excited for those that are here today who are celebrating this day with you because it truly is um, something that can't be done alone, as Jacob has mentioned earlier. Great, great to see the crowd. Before I go into the bulk of my comments, I wanted to mention uh, Market Street Mission has a connection with Faith Rx. I have a privilege of working with men on Friday nights. And if you are interested in a faith and fitness community, um, we have something for everyone. And it's Friday nights. Uh, if you have a sponsor, uh, you can get permission to come in Summit. We have a program there that uh, has been, I think, life-changing as well and certainly complementary to what goes on every day here at the mission. Um, some folks, uh, the, the rumor is true, some have married partners that they've met at Marcus Street Mission. Some have made lifelong friends. And it is true, Jack did learn how to do jump rope uh, in the past year, but it did, did take almost a year for Jack. But uh, we love him. We do love Jack. When I was asked about two months ago, a month and a half ago, if I'd be willing uh, to speak before this group, I, I first thought, oh boy, uh, I love this group. What would I say? I'm not a pastor. Um, but I do have a heart for, for you folks and uh, have had the pleasure of meeting many of you. But I do think God has met with me as I asked, Lord, what would you have me to say to these men at such a crucial time in their life and in their lives? And every day I would open the scriptures, having prayed that prayer and prayed it many times. And every day I would find myself saying, well, that's, that's an answer to prayer. That was some, that's something I'm going to speak about. That's what you're drawing my attention to. That's so good. Then the next day would happen, and I'd open the Word, and I'd go into the Word, and I'd pray. I'd read the Scriptures, and I'm saying, boy, that's really powerful. Maybe that's what you're going to have me say to this group of men. This happened for a month and a half. Every time I'd open the Word, I'd be taught afresh of the vitality of God's Word, the power of God's Word, and how it applies to each of our lives. I came to the conclusion, and this isn't even my message, that if you don't pay any attention to what I say later on tonight, if you just remember that there's power in God's Word, and that there's power in consistently sitting before God's Word, you will have learned a life, you will learn in your lifetime far more than you will remember from me today. And I truly believe that. There's two uh, quips or little wise sayings that I heard that I think were appropriate right now relative to the reading of God's Word. And one of them came this morning. I wasn't looking for it, but it was in my email. It said, daily consistency transforms. 
daily consistency transform. Intensity impresses, but it's daily consistency that transforms us, right? We can be impressed with the intensity, but how about the normal meeting together with God, reading his word, that consistency? It was another quip that I remember as a young man when my dad gave me my second Bible. I don't think it was my first Bible. It was my second Bible. And he wrote it inside the cover of that Bible. And I believe it today as much as I did then. It said, this book will keep you from sin. Or sin will keep you from this book. Right? Each of you men have expressed joy, being forgiven of your sins. We can approach God through Jesus Christ. Even when we sin. But don't let that sin keep you from this book. We will sin. But we have a faithful God who will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. To remember nothing else, be in the book. Be in the book daily, consistently. And you'll be shocked at what God does in renewing your mind and blessing your way. So, my message today is really about three questions. Three things to consider. One is your identity. Who are you? Who are you men? And I'm really speaking to the men in the front row. Who are you? The world will tell you who you are. Some of your experiences will tell you who you are. Right? I hope that you're informing your mind, as I heard in your testimonies, of who you are. All right? And take comfort in that. Many testified about their childhood family dynamics, schooling, some had careers, others maybe moved from job to job. All of you did describe, though, addiction, failure, hardship. Sometimes we saw pain. We could assume pain is also part of that equation. More than a few of you mentioned that in your time at the mission, God has met with you. God has met with you. And helped you understand who you are, who God is. Some of you knew who you were, but you became reconnected with God as a result of being in the Life Change program and hearing it from pastors and servants of God here. It's our desire, and I've heard it many times in our board meetings, and I've heard it from Dave. Our desire is people have a life change that begins with Christ. You know, on the front of our, our building, we boldly proclaim what? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And if you forget that, I've seen really great artwork where people take that home. And I'd, I'd love to have one of those, by the way, if you've seen them. The Jesus saves um, photograph. This is what this place is about. And... Many of you experience that life-changing power of God. So, I'm going to ask you about your identity again. I'm going to ask you, when I ask you this, this question, what comes to mind? Who are you? Who are you? What really comes to mind? Think about it. I'll use myself as an example to try to prove a point. Remember your words, though, not just mine. I'm a 59-year-old late-stage professional. I'm a person with advanced heart disease. I'm a husband to a beautiful wife, an incredible wife. I'm a father of five loved daughters. I'm a child of God by faith and forgiven by the precious blood of Christ. These are beautiful things, right? I painted an accurate, but not complete picture. How can you do that in a few words, right? Maybe something similar to what you guys did when I asked you the question. Would you agree, though, that the things that came to your mind first often take prominence? They take prominence in our thinking? Maybe in my an uh, answer, in my example that I gave, I was overly focused on my health. The lack of youth, and maybe underneath all that is the question of whether or not I'm needed. Okay. These are some of the things. Why? Well, maybe because those were the things that were top of mind. 
Nothing I said was wrong, but maybe the order of them and the focus on some things to the, ne to the neglect of others isn't really healthy for me. What is that? Maybe it's not healthy for me. Maybe in your case, your struggles and failures come front and center for you. That can be very challenging, very discouraging, and very defeating. Maybe others can't see what's going on in your head. But you hear that negative talk, and I hear it in my head. We can't ignore our past failings, but we can reframe them. We can reframe them, and we can reorder them, putting them in their proper place. This is the wise counsel that I was given by a pastor many years ago. So suppose you are a believer, and we heard of that earlier tonight. Many of you are. You're a follower of Christ. Scripture says that you are new creatures in Christ. Shouldn't that be your primary identity? Instead of your failings? Instead of those voices in your head? Your identity of being in Christ is a powerful reality that will transform your thinking and give you hope. I remember when I met with the, the board and we were talking about statements that represent who we are. And they said, we got to give them hope. we got to be hope, right? And as you know, this is what this place gives folks. Hope in God. What can be more comfortable and powerful than realizing that you're in Christ, that you're a child of God? I'm going to read a couple of verses now. And this is one I know, I believe I've seen it up the stairs when you come into the mission. Probably one of the first verses that you've seen as you approach the mission, maybe on your first day. 2 Corinthians 5.17 It says, If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. This in Christ phrase means being radically transformed to the core. To the core of one's being, death to the old way of life, risen with Christ to a new and better life. Is that an important reality for the Christian, the child of God? You better believe it. I want you guys to be thinking in these terms. I want that to be going through your mind daily, hourly. Remind yourselves who you are. It's so important. I'm going to read you one more verse in this section. 1 John 3, 2 says, Dearly beloved. God wants you to know that you guys are loved. Dearly beloved. You say, who, me? Yes, yes, you. Now we are the children of God, and it has not been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And it says, and it goes on to say, And every man that has this hope, this anticipation, this promise, does what? You know the verse? Does it say that he kicks back and says the work is done? Not really. It doesn't say that. It says that one purifies himself daily as he is pure. Our new identity becomes a motivating driving force. Only the blood of Christ can truly purify us. We know that. We heard that in your testimony. We heard that in the scripture. But we understand our privileges, our responsibilities as being a child of God. We will seek to walk, and I know men, you will seek to walk as followers of Christ in the power that God gives you. I want to encourage you, practically speaking, in this first point, that you meditate on that reality, go deep into what that really means. That it not just be a catchphrase, I'm a child of God, I'm born again, I'm okay. No, what does that mean? And who is this God that saved you and reconciled you to himself? How does this work out practically? So when your head and your heart tells you you need to quit, it tells you you need to cut corners, that you need this thing or that thing, you need to preach back to yourself who you are. Remember who you are. Pray for fresh courage and faith. Remember that your Heavenly Father loves you and will enable you to grow, even through hardship. Who are you? Hopefully, that voice that comes to your mind, 
because I'm a child of God by faith in Christ. I want you to consider your purpose now. What's your purpose? I would ask you to fill out this little questionnaire. What is your purpose? Now, there are many good answers, but what is your primary purpose? Right? You may have many, and you should have many purposes. As a Christian, you have a greater purpose. I want to remind you of them. In fact, I'm going to use something that was written 2,000 years ago, and I could use many portions of Scripture, and I'll just read this one. This comes out of Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. I think it's powerful, and I've read this many times, and it didn't come to me in power until recently. David, King David, prayed this prayer, and it's very telling. And he says, and I will pray this prayer in a minute, may God be gracious to us and bless us. Would he make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations? Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people with fairness, and you guide the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Does he sound like a broken record, if I can be inappropriate? Um, and then he talks about the earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. So David's speaking to God on behalf of his people, and he's asking for blessing. And we do that. And in a minute, I'm going to do that for you. But he's not merely asking that their day would go well, or that their crops would increase, or that they'd have a lot of money in the bank. He doesn't. David actually seeks a tangible blessing from God, but for what purpose? That God's ways and his power, God's ways and God's power, might result in God's praise. God's ways and his power might be resulting in God's praise. These aren't just folks around here. David was concerned that all people, all nations, would praise God. And while I might not, like the psalmist, be able to boast about your crops, I don't know what you guys have, if you're farmers, or I can't imagine you are, um, you guys are walking testimony to the grace of God. People here have noticed that there's life change that has taken place, and they're seeing it. And you have an opportunity to boast about what God is doing. Now, you did it when you were asked to do it. You did it on microphone. You guys did it really well. Will you do it tonight? Will you do it tomorrow? When people want to know, what's happened to you? What's happened to you, John? What's happened to you, Cam? Not the guy I remembered before. Are you going to do this? Point to God. Others still need to hear that don't believe. They need to hear what God has done in your life. That brings glory to God. We want to proclaim the message that he is the one who is above that mission door. He's the one who saves. The message is still the same. For our desire is that all the nations would praise him. They would know his ways and his power. And that he would be known throughout the earth. Just have one last point. So we talked about your identity. What do we talk about the next thing? Your purpose. The last thing I want to talk about your posture. I'm not sure if that's the right word, um, but I, it's a P word. I thought we'd use your posture. The Bible teaches us that while heaven awaits the Christian, this life is not a life of ease, but the scriptures use the imagery of a battle. It's just not an exaggeration. Life is a spiritual battle. For the believer, not just for you in the front row, for the guy that's behind the mic, and everybody behind you. Suppose I was going to transport you to the Russian-Ukraine conflict, and you had an hour to pack everything that you needed for that place, for that conflict. What would you do? If you had access to everything that you needed, well, I believe all of you would come back with a helmet, body gear. If you needed glasses, you'd have your glasses. If you had the possibility of night vision, if you knew the safety associated with digging a trench, you might have a shovel, you might have a communication device so that you could communicate with leadership. I have no doubt that you guys would come prepared. Why? Because you realize it's a matter of life and death. 
Be Cain prepared any other way after that warning, we'd have words. We'd say, I love you. You gotta, you gotta go back and get your stuff. You gotta be dressed appropriately for this. I in the class before you want to remind you that you are in a battle. And that God has given himself and everything that you need for this battle. You need to put it on every day. The class before you, I don't know if they started the tradition, but they have a commemorative coin that has been purchased, and I have it down here in the bag. I don't know if you guys noticed, I had a bag up here. I'm going to give it to each one of you. It's from the class before you, who want you to remember that you're in a battle, that you're not alone. And it's a reminder, and it takes from the passage of Scripture in Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 17, which I'll read in a moment, the imagery that is available to you to be put on for your protection every day. Okay? It doesn't help you if you leave it. If you partially put it on. And I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to pass out the coins. Okay? It says, clothe yourselves with the full armor of God, so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the world's rulers of darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to stand. Stand on the ground on that evil day, and having done all, stand. Stand firm, therefore, by fastening the belt of truth. Put that around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness by fitting your feet with the preparation that comes from the good news of peace. And in all of this, by taking up that shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming fire, fiery arrows of the evil one. And take that helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, with every prayer and petition, pray at all times, in the Spirit, and to this end, be alert with all perseverance and petitions for all the saints. So as a token of achievement, preceding class is provided please, for you. I would encourage you guys, keep them in your pocket. That they would be a reminder to you of the things that we talked about today. This is in no way a lucky charm. It will do nothing from that standpoint. But it will be a reminder to you of the armor and of the battle and of the goodness of God and your need to be ready for the battle, which is going to come every day. And it might not even be visible to others. It might be that earlier question that I asked is, what's your identity? Who are you? What's your purpose? So right now I'm just going to hand these out and uh, ask God to Well, thank you very much, Matt, for uh, reminding us to be equipped for this battle. And going back to his main point, we must be men who are governed by the Scriptures. Be men who are governed by the Scriptures. Uh, at this point, I'm going to call Matt back up, actually. And uh, all class officers uh, from this uh, Life Change class, uh, Dave Scott, please come on up. And uh, or, uh, any other board members that are <clears throat> excuse me, in attendance, <clears throat> uh, please come up as we're going to present uh, Dave and the board with the plaque.
Well, I don't know if everybody knows, but when you come for the tour of Market Street Mission, you need to look at the walls where the guys are in class on the third floor. I often respond to that as the Hebrews 11, the witness. Um, so you guys are joining that crowd of witness to what God has done in your lives. So we can look at this and say, look what the Lord has done. We would challenge you to be that example as we've been hearing that question. Thanks, guys. All right, it gives me great pleasure to uh, call up Coach, Glenn Coach Ruggiero, and uh, Miss Diane Young. Um, at this point, we are going to uh, hand out the uh, certificates, the graduation certificates, and along with the certifications, let me see these real quick. Um, we had a special citation, a good citation, not a bad one, um, from uh, the great Senator uh, Anthony Bucco uh, of our district. And he couldn't be here today, uh, but he did send a little bit of a letter. I'll just read part of it. Uh, he just wants to congratulate all 16 of you men uh, from graduating the Life Change Program. Uh, he says, your achievement is a powerful testimony to the unwavering uh, determination, resilience, and commitment to faith and personal growth. Um, your successful completion of this transformative program signifies triumph and embodies the transformative power of faith perseverance and community support um, and then he wants to just remind you guys as you prepare to mark this significant milestone uh, today on the Morristown Green surrounded by loved ones and supporters remember that your in your journey inspires all who witness it so we thank you very much Senator Nabucco for your kind words and for the citations <laughs> Good evening. I cannot begin to express how proud I am of the men who are graduating here today. You have all worked so very, very hard on everything about your life change. I congratulate you. So, let me begin with Innocent Alone. <laughs> Amira. Congratulations. Thank you. Craig, I love like donut it. sandwiches. <laughs> One, two, three. You were a wonderful president, president of the class, and a very big help for me. Ronnie Brown. Ronnie. And well, Harmona. Thank you. David Cook. All right, Dave. He knows how much I love his smile. <laughs> Jack from Mel.
Kevin Graham. I don't know. <laughs> Michael, lean to the right. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Lizardo. <laughs> Nicholas McKenna. Stop right over there. <laughs> hey, Carlos Rodriguez. Carlos. Oh, 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 Thank you for everything, Ms. Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Coach had some choreographed handshakes going on that one. Some good um, uh, we have at the mission a, a lot of work is done by uh, men who have graduated and then become mission interns and they uh, dedicate up to two more years of staying at the mission to help out in various ways thrift store house managers kitchen um, driving night shift uh, uh, case management just so many different different ways that they help out and uh, actually, real quick, just if anybody could stand or raise their hand who has been a mission intern at some point. Anybody here? Got quite a few of them. And we realize that um, these guys really do a tremendous work at the mission. We're really thankful for them. Uh, Second Timothy, verses 1 and 2, and even into verse 3, right? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. The things that you have heard from me... Among many witnesses, commit these faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Uh, you, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. And these guys do endure hardship. They do bring the testimony of Christ. They are oftentimes uh, the front line to do that. The people coming in the doors can relate to them very well, and they relate to them. And so it's really amazing to see what the Lord does through them. We're very thankful for them. And we have two men who are completing... Uh, one is not here, one may be here, but um, Miguel Dur Duran and Ro uh, Robbie, Miguel's back there, he's completing. And Robbie Andrevet, who is down in Jersey Shore, uh, those two men have completed uh, two years as interns. We're really thankful and grateful for them. And we're bringing on a new intern from this class, Terrence Miller. Terrence, would you stand up? And as I said to the last interns, Terrence, now you're mine. Keep in mind.
All right, at this point, I want to call up uh, the site manager of our location in uh, Newton. That's uh, Jeff Lukowski. Come on up. Um, and also, one more reminder, uh, after the uh, we close in prayer, uh, everybody can head back to 9 Market Street. You'll see the Jesus Save sign. And we're having refreshments, cake, uh, waters, and just a time of fellowship right in the chapel area. So you're more than welcome to go on back. I also want to call any staff members, uh, board, uh, interns, uh, and instructors to come on up. And the men, too. We're going to call you up, and we're going to lay hands on you in a closing prayer. Please uh, join with me in prayer. To you, our Father and our God, we give you thanks for all that you have done and all that you're doing. How you are using Market Street Mission, 135 years of service and bringing glory to your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing here and what you're doing in the lives of these men. It's evident that your grace is abundant and that you are doing a work in them as you've called them to your very self. We thank you for every staff member that has poured into these men every moment that they've had here in Morristown, for every all of the tools and resources that you've given to Market Street Mission and to these men. I pray your blessing, your continued blessing upon every one of them, that they would indeed be dead to the old man and alive to Christ. They would walk in the newness that comes from, uh, from Jesus, and that you would strengthen them every day, that they would indeed be living testimonies to what you've done in their lives. So may, their, may your grace be evident, and may they be living testimonies that Jesus Christ is the way the truth, and the life. Go with them after this night. We thank you for the past 9 to 12 months. And as they step out into what you've called them to now, may they always look to you. May they be quick to turn to you. Would you keep them far from the devil's snares? And may they be those living stones, those living examples of the transformative work that only Christ can do in the heart of sinful man. We thank you for the encouragement of families and for this time that we've had tonight. We thank you that the gospel is the foundation in which we work from and how that gospel transforms man. So bless them, use them all the days of their lives that they would bring glory to Christ, the one and only God who saved them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.